We're laying tiles and placing meeples. That's right, it's the classic Carcassonne from Z-Man Games. It's my favorite game! This quick and versatile strategy game for two to five players is the perfect gateway experience for friends who may be new to the tabletop world. Setup begins by shuffling the 84 land tiles and placing them in face down stacks. Next, place the darker backed starting tile in the center of the table. Place the scoreboard nearby and give each player eight meeples, one of which goes on the zero space of the scoreboard. Select your first player and that's set up. That's it, it's so easy, right? Gameplay follows a simple three step action. On a player's turn, they will place a tile by drawing one from any stack and placing it face up on the board to continue the landscape. Roads must connect to existing roads, cities to cities, and fields to fields. Tiles can be rotated any direction to make that placement legal. Next, the player may optionally place a meeple from their supply onto the tile that they just laid down. The base game has four different locations where a meeple may be placed. A road, a city, a field, or a monastery. When placing a road, the meeple is considered a highway woman, or highway man if you're gonna make a thing about it. Highway people cannot be placed on roads that already contain other highway people. As roads terminate in villages or cities, they become eligible for scoring if the road is complete on both ends, and then go back into your meeple supply. Meeples placed on cities become knights. Like highway women, they cannot be placed in a city segment that contains another knight. However, unconnected city segments can contain separate knights that could eventually merge into the same city. In this case, the player with the most knights in the city will receive all the points once the city is complete. If they tie, both players get full points. Cities are complete once they are surrounded by walls and no holes remain in the center. Meeples placed on fields are laid down on their side and become farmers. These meeples are gonna stay in place for the entirety of the game, so choose wisely. And they score points based on the number of completed cities touching their field. Monastery tiles allow a player to place a meeple as a monk. Monastery tiles are considered complete when they are completely surrounded by other tiles, at which point the monk can score points. These are the best ones! Once a meeple completes one or more of these features in a turn, the player immediately scores the feature on that scoreboard by moving their meeple equal to the points granted. Roads are worth one point per tile, cities are worth two points per tile, and a bonus two per coat of arms. Monasteries are worth one point plus one per tile surrounding. That's nine. If a player scores points, they remove their meeple from the board and add it back to their meeple supply. Since players only have seven meeples to work with, they must tactically place them on tiles to take full advantage of the highest scoring features. The game ends after all tiles have been placed. Fields are now scored by awarding three points per completed city touch and depth field. Uncompleted features still score partial points. Cities and their coats of arms are only worth half, but roads and monasteries both score a point per tile in the segment. Whoever has the highest points at the end of the game wins! And that's basic Carcassonne. The game has tons of published expansions, including rivers which vary up the starting board, abbots who can use gardens as if they were monasteries, and lots more. I'm Becca Scott, and if that highway woman bit bothered you, maybe you should just relax. If you want to watch me play this game and other awesome games, come check out Game the Game right here on Geek and Sundry. I'll see you there.